As much as I want to believe that a fruitarian kitten could outlift a gorilla, I do believe science has shown us that bodybuilders know what they're doing. They add a certain amount of protein, they gain a certain amount of muscle, they take steroids. Yes, that's a side hustle that we don't have to worry about here. Protein exists. If you want to be plant-based like I am, totally vegetarian, you need my help. So I'm basically vegan now, stronger than your grandmother most likely. I only have eggs occasionally for the nutrients that are missing on a vegan diet, clearly. They're B12, freaking iron that's actually absorbed, preformed to vitamin A. Amino acids are like a third distant cousin to all that. I don't even, I don't eat eggs for the protein, bro. I can get protein from quinoa and beans and tofu and not soy based though. So we'll give you some actually delicious meal ideas in a bit, but I just want to talk about I was carnivore for a while, stronger than Hercules, and it was like so easy to get too much protein. So I had definitely no deficiencies in that area, and I was very strong. And then I noticed I had a forehead rash and constipation and nausea all the time. So I was like, I can't do this anymore. I did an eight and a half day dry fast. And then basically I went plant-based and it was mostly fruits and juices because I was afraid of fiber, very low protein, and I was getting predictably weaker every week. I was like, oh, this sucks, but I've been down that path before. My health is more important to me than strength. But eventually my man mind kicks in. And it's like, I don't want to do this anymore. Let's get strong again. I hate the kitten strength version of my fruit bitch self. It's just weak and just like, I'm not even glowing with health. I'm just weak and bloated. So it's like, if I had perfect skin as a fruitarian, but I was weak, okay. That's a trade off I would make, but I didn't. And I'll be honest with you, when I was doing this fruitarian thing, very low protein, and I was adding some white rice at night, which is like 7% protein, it's barely higher than fruit, I was getting depressed. I don't know if it's because I was lacking every nutrient known to man or what, but I just like, I had no motivation to do anything. And just lately, the last, I'd say month or so, I've been upping the protein quite significantly and my joy has come back. And I've noticed that as well when going carnivore, it's like, oh, I'm kind of happy again. Although I've got depressed again on carnivore, so there's no real answers here that we're learning, but I seem to feel more energized and happier and stronger, eating an increased amount of protein, plant-based of course, now. Now, am I as strong as I was on carnivore? No, not quite, but I'm only slightly behind. Like I got weaker and now I'm getting stronger again because I was like super low protein. So I used to be able to do 13 reps of these push-ups. Now it's nine, but like it was five <laughs> a little while ago and then it was six and seven, eight, nine. So like I'm getting back to carnivore levels, only I'm actually healthier now then that heart attack waiting to happen. So I'm still doing all the same workouts I was doing as a carnivore, it's just I can't do as many reps as that Herculean man beast freak who ate meat. And there was meat and hormones and all kinds of things in that meat. And he was strong as heck. But I've always said that health was my main priority and I just, I think exercise is healthy. And so I run and I do these calisthenics moves and it's a good balanced healthy lifestyle. Now, when it comes to protein, you're gonna notice one obvious fact. Plants seem to require more skill to digest. Meat is very, I'm not even here, bro. It's in your gut, you're not bloated. It doesn't take up a huge amount of space. You can get easily enough protein and barely notice it. I was nauseous all the time and constipated as hell. Sulfur poos burning my ass, but most people don't have that problem with meat. So like, could you do this on meat? Yeah, if you wanna be down there with Satan in a lounge somewhere and you're handshaking, you're playing cards and you're letting him win so he'll give you a better room in hell, that could be a path for you. But like, if you wanna ascend up into a vegetarian type of lifestyle, yeah, come on now. 
So plants take skill and time. It, you're not just gonna, okay, how much protein? Okay, this much? Okay, eat lots of beans and quinoa? Yeah, no problem, okay. Ow! It's gonna take time, you gotta build up slow. You're starting with fruits. And then like maybe I can have the 7% protein white rice. Okay, that's good. Let's try the 11 or 12% buckwheat now. Hmm, pretty good. We're going slow here. It's not a race. The turtle wins the race. Just relax. Eventually you add a teaspoon of beans. You're trying to teaspoon. Not yet. You work up to quinoa. Quinoa. You're gonna be fine. But basically what I'm doing now is two meals a day, grain based, but I'm adding beans to each of those meals or another source of higher protein. So the quinoa, that's 15% protein. You're getting a good amount. There's vegetables in there that has protein as well. I'm adding a cup of frozen green peas. That's very high. And then a little bit of beans or sometimes I do the smoked tofu, fava bean based tofu, by the way. That's a fun one. It's a different texture, it's chewy, unnecessary. You can just stick with the beans or the eggs. Sometimes it's an egg meal. Three little hard boiled duck eggs. Never hurt nobody. They're not alive. They're not little human beings. It's a shell of nothing. You're fine. Stop judging me. It's just an egg. It never lived. But basically I'm just aiming for 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is really an archaic measurement because I weigh about 152 pounds and so eating that much protein, it doesn't make sense. A lot of my body weight is fat and water and strength and just like courage. So hair, like all kinds of amazing qualities and it's stupid. Like you would really calculate this based on lean mass, but then you're thinking too hard and you're getting body fat scales and you're like, okay, I'm 10% pretty. Grow up. It just seven it's easy 0.7 don't go higher don't go lower if you think like okay i'm gonna have one of those meals is just gonna be fruit okay you're not building muscle anymore i don't care what planet you're on like you're strong enough for what you do that's cool i'm proud of you you're not like gaining though like you're you're staying you're waiting in a pool at that point like you're a fruitarian you're healthier perhaps yeah cool awesome hydrated hey Peeing a lot, are you? Cool, share it with your friend. I'm just telling you from my own experience, I've been through all levels of protein from fruitarian, the juice fasts, 90 day juice fast, like I was skin and bones. I still had a decent amount of muscle, but like I could not, I was just getting weaker and weaker and I did not, I was happy less. that's lack of happy, it was not good. And I've also overdone the protein on carnivore and that like, I was so damn strong per pound. It was like insane. So like right now I'm having the balance of both strength and health and just happiness. So that's what I do. It's just, I'm focusing on higher protein plant foods and you can't just eat whatever you want and then build a huge amount of muscle if you're not focusing on getting some of these higher protein foods in. So it's like the quinoas and the beans, and lots of veggies and the green peas. But just measure it out one time so you know. I do about three quarters of a cup of quinoa because there's one thing you're gonna notice. To get a certain amount of protein with plants brings a certain amount of calories with it. So it's like if you're doing nothing but quinoa and vegetables to get your protein, you're gonna be overeating the calories and then you get flubberized like I've been doing lately. And so like, I see you carnivores like, oh, to hit 100 grams of protein, like you could do that in 600 calories or less. Like it's hilarious. So this, you have to pay a little more attention. So right now I'm trying to kind of up the bean percentage slowly and lower the quinoa a bit. So the calories are more, not like a fat Christmas man type of calorie intake. But the best thing I've noticed with increased protein intake is the blood sugar control seems better. If you just eat white rice and vegetables, it's gonna spike a bit. And you might get tired after that meal at some point. You don't even know why you're tired and you don't know what to do with your life. Whereas like quinoa with beans and veggies, it's like this slower release. 
and then you're just going about your day. You're satiated longer, more energized. Baby boy skin could be yours, but that's how I get enough protein without processed foods and protein powders. And tofu is optional. That's just something I bought as a treat. It was smoked. It was more for the flavor and the fun and the texture, but I could be totally happy with just beans, each of those meals, and then the odd egg meal with it. Three eggs. No, nobody died. So just weigh your food in chronometer for a couple days. You'll get the gist of it. You'll see each meal okay. If I need 100 grams of protein, that's 50 grams per meal. What does that look like? One cup of quinoa, how many cups of beans is that? So like for me, I don't think of this. I never weigh my food anymore. It's just when I make quinoa, it's three quarters of a cup. Boom, soak that overnight. Beans, I make one cup of beans, cook that. Soak it overnight, of course, then cook it. Soak it in kombu, the seaweed that helps digest the beans. Then you're not farting all the time on your wife. And then that amount is broken up into four meals. So that's like two days worth. I might have to increase that so I'm cooking less often. One cup of frozen peas goes in that Instapot. It's like when I'm doing the quinoa meals, that's three minutes I'm cooking. Boom. Millet, I do six minutes. And buckwheat is six as well. So it's like... The vegetables matter. Broccoli can be thrown in with the quinoa. Three minutes, it's not overcooked to hell. But like the six minute, okay, now you start, oh, that's the cabbage meal now. That can be cooked longer and that's fine. So like there's lots of nuances, you'll be fine. After you thumb up the video, of course. Thumbs down if your source of protein is hamster blood. I'm so disappointed. Uh, it's, it's not only the least ethical source of protein possible, it's not that bioavailable. Sure, it's raw food and it's high in enzymes, but like, find a better path. It's not easy. You go to a pet shop and you're like, Oh, can I have a hamster? And they're looking at you like, as a pet, right? You're not doing this for that hamster blood trend for protein. What? Of course not. I totally have a cage at home. You want to see it? And then you have like fake pictures of cages on your phone, like grow up. Just like eat tofu, fava bean based. I'll leave after you subscribe to Bitcoin technology. That made no sense. I'll leave. For more videos on Stanley.